In this video, I'm gonna show you a new way to capture video of you and your loved ones. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you, and today we're gonna to check out the new Google Clips. So first, the Google Clips is this little tiny camera. It's about $249, and it allows you to capture new experiences that you may have not been able to capture before. So most of the time, I'm behind the camera taking pictures, videos, and all kinds of different experiences with my kids, but a lot of the times there's nobody else to hold the camera, especially even if I'm with my wife, there's no one else to capture those moments of all of us together. So the Google Clips allows you to capture all of those without having to do too much. All you need to do is turn this on just by going like that, and it starts recording. So as how this works is it will automatically take pictures and videos when it sees you in the lens. So if it sees you or other people, it knows, and when it looks at the expression, the different lighting, the different angles, if it finds something that it likes to record, it will automatically record that and take this seven second clip. Now there is no audio on this, so it will just record a video that you can then quickly share and remember those moments. Now this little thing is very easy to set up and we're gonna show you how to do that in a minute. But also some of the other things that you can do with this is it has this clip that it comes with. So you can quickly clip this on to different objects and put it up in different places so you can get some new angles that you would have never captured before. So many times when I'm recording a video, I always want a second angle to make the video a little bit more interesting. So right now, if I wanted to clip to a different angle, I couldn't do that because I don't have another camera set up. But this is really cool because you can set up those little clips from different angles. So if you're recording with your smartphone, maybe you have this set up in a different angle, you can then take a bunch of different little clips together and make a really cool video. So you don't need to merge your different pictures and videos from your phone's camera and this camera together, but that's just a suggestion that I have to really make the most use out of what this does. And I'll show you how you can do all of that stuff in this video. So I found the Google Clips to be very helpful because it just sits there and it will automatically capture those moments. Maybe if I'm feeding my baby for the first time, I can set this up and it will capture that moment, which is very handy to have. Now I do want to mention this is not meant to be a few different things. First, it's not meant to be an action camera. So you aren't going to be taking this down the mountain recording yourself. It's just not meant to do that. Also, it's not meant to be a security camera. Even though in the app, there's an option to see exactly what it's seeing, you do not want to use that as a security camera. It just doesn't last that long. It's not meant to do that. Also, it is not meant to be a baby monitor. So you could set this up and record your baby. I love doing that, but it's not meant to watch your baby. There's no audio feed that goes to your phone or anything like that. And the battery life is only about three hours. So you don't wanna use it as a baby monitor. So those are some precautions that you wanna take when you're using this, but let's open up the box and see what's inside and talk about more how it works. Now let's take a look at the Google Clips box. So here on the side, it shows us the specifications. First, we have 130 degree lens field of view. So this is a really nice wide angle lens. Next, we have up to three hours of smart capture. Next, you have 16 gig of internal storage, which after about 100 clips, I only filled up about 10%. So that definitely is plenty of storage. Then you do not need an internet connection to capture or to transfer to your phone. That will all be done through the application. Here it has Corning Gorilla Glass 3, so that is the protection of the glass on the lens. And then you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LTE. That's how it's gonna transfer the information. Next, we have USB-C charging. And then here you have a pixel size of 1.55 micrometers. And then it records at 15 frames per second. Now on the back here, it talks about how you can use the device without any hands. You just set it up, turn it on, and then it will begin recording. And it will look at expressions and lighting and framing and capture the perfect moment. And then it can also link to your Google Photos account and it will look at familiar faces and capture those. Now it does come with this clip and I'll show you in just a second. But to get this device paired, you do need to have a Android device or an iOS device with iOS 10. All right, so let's get into the box. Right in here, we have the Google Clips, and then inside you have the Let's Get Started guide, which is pretty simple. All you need to do is go in and download the Google Clips application and go through the setup. And then here you have the Clips case, and then at the bottom you do have a USB-C to a USB-A to charge up the device. 
So now all I need to do is strap this on. And once you put on the case, it's really nice. It has this clip here on the back where you can easily clip it to different items, but it is a stand. So it will just stay like that. So you can easily prop it anywhere, or you could clip it onto different items, a light stand, uh, you know, different handles that you have around the house or a cereal box, whatever it be, you can easily clip this on and it will automatically rotate. So if you put it upside down, it will orient the correct way when you go into the Google Clips app to get the information over to your phone. So let's go and set this up. To set it up, I just need to download the Google Clips application. I'm gonna open this up and then it says, take a few moments to get to know your Clips camera. So here it is going to search for the camera and it says, press the button on your camera to get it connected. So I'm gonna press this to essentially wake it up and then it will connect together. If you don't see the lights blinking, you may need to charge the Clip device. All right, now it is connecting to the camera. It just takes a few seconds. So here it is asking if you want to introduce your friends and family to the clip so that it can look for them and then make sure that it captures photos whenever it sees them, linking to your Google Photos. So I'm going to select Allow, and then I need to choose the Google account that I want to connect it to. Here it's downloading and analyzing photos that I use in Google Photos Library so that it can work together so that it captures the exact people that it needs to. All right, it says that I am all set and my camera is ready to use. So I'm just going to select finish. And now let's do a brief overview of the application. So right now it is currently connected to this, but it's not on or capturing. Up here at the top, we do have battery life. So if we pull this down, we can see I'm at 21% battery life. Here we have the settings. And then here we have how much storage we've taken up. Right now I am at 0%. If we select settings, we can go through this and check all of the different settings out. But right now, I'm just gonna turn this on and go take some video. So all you need to do is turn the camera lens a little bit and it will then turn on. And you can see right here at the top, you line up the green dot and the line and it will turn on. And if you turn it this way, it will turn off. So once you turn it on, it will begin capturing. So you'll see the light indicating that it is currently not recording, but it's currently on ready to capture. Now you just need to set this up and have it about three to eight feet away from you. You don't want it too far or the subjects are gonna be a little too small. And if it's too close, you're just not gonna be able to make out the subject. Right here, you do have the shutter button. So if you press that, it will begin recording a video and you'll see the three dots light up showing you that it is currently recording. And that will record for about seven seconds and then it will stop. Down here on the bottom, all you have is the charging port. You do have a reset button there. And then on the back, you have the nice G logo. And that is all that is on the device. Over here on the application, we can go into the live preview. So when this is on, you can go and see exactly what it is seeing. So I can actually rotate this and you can see that it is rotating on the application. So there we can see that it does landscape. It then will do a portrait. If I keep turning it around, it will do landscape and it always orients correctly. And then again, we have the portrait and landscape one more time and you see this so that it's automatically showing you what angle the camera is set at. So even if you're not near the camera, you can check to see if it is lined up. And then I can press on there and it says, this is the way that the camera orientation is shown and you just don't have any other settings there and you select got it. And so we can see now that it's automatically started to record some of those moments. If I tap on it, you'll see it play and I can save and delete it right away. So let's go out and do some recording and uh, check out some of the things that we can get with this and come back and I'll show you how to use all of the settings in the application. Now I really like how easy this camera is to set up. All I need to do is position it, switch the lens on, and then it's ready to go and I can leave it and it will capture those moments. Okay, now that we have some clips saved on our Google Clips, let's head into the Clips application and I'm gonna show you how it all works. So first, as soon as you open the Clips app, it will connect to your Google Clips and start syncing that information to show you what you have taken. So now all I need to do is scroll down and I can see that information. I will note that here it says that I have taken 100 clips that are ready to view and it's only used about 6% of the 16 gigabyte storage, which is pretty amazing. So you can take a lot of clips, you'll definitely run out of battery before you run out of storage. So now if I scroll down, I can see these clips. You can see that it will start playing the movement there. And if we come down here, 
you can see here it's showing a little clip right there. If I tap on the clip, I can then save it, edit it, or delete it. Uh, if I want to fully save it, you can also do the quick command, which is to swipe to the right to save that clip, or I can swipe to the left to delete it. And then up here, you can see that this is a suggested clip. So right now it's showing all the clips. So if I go through, you can see some clips have that little suggested icon there. And then other ones just have nothing or they have this little icon. That icon means that I actually use the shutter button on the clip to take the picture. If I wanna see just the suggested clips, I just need to switch the knob up there at the top and now it is only showing suggested clips or clips that I have actually taken by pressing the button there because it thinks that that is something that you would want to watch after you have selected the button. So we can go through and see all of those. So then down here we have the option where we can instantly save all of the suggested clips. We can save all 100 clips or we can delete all 100 clips. So that makes it very easy to clean out your Google clips or to quickly save them all so that you have them all stored and then you can go and sort through them later. So let's show you there are actually three different ways that you can save a clip. So let me show you how that works right now. So if we go up here into the settings and right now it says save clip as and it's set on motion photo. So it says combines a video and a high quality still and works best in Google Photos. So this setting works great if you are uploading to Google Photos. That means that it will play the motion photo, it's the best quality, uh, but if you download it to the phone, you will not actually see it play. Here on my Galaxy Note 8, I did not. Then you have the video file. So if you want it to be a video file, you can actually save it that way, and then it makes it easier for you to make videos right on your phone without having to share it to Google Photos. And then you also have the animated GIF option where you can share it instantly with anybody through text, and it's very easy to send to others, but it is the lower image quality. So let me show you an example of all three of those. So if I go into the gallery, there are three clips that I have already saved, and they will be in my clips folder in my gallery. So first I'm gonna look at the motion photo option. So in the gallery on my Galaxy Note 8, it actually doesn't play. Next, let's go to the video option. So here is another clip, I can select play, and there is no sound, of course, because the clip does not have a microphone, uh, so it doesn't record any sound. So there you can see it will play. And we have the animated GIF option where it will just continue to play on repeat. Now, if we go and view those same clips in Google Photos, this is the first one, which is a motion photo. And here at the top, it says motion photo is on. And there we can see that it plays the motion photo. Then if we go next, here we have the video. We just need to tap to play. There it plays the little video. And then last we have the animated GIF. So all of those will play in our Google Photos if you're using the Google Photos application. Now I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna save the ones that I like. So I can just watch it for a second, see if it's something that I would want to save. I really like that one, so I'm gonna save it. Then the next one, I'm gonna check out, see if it's something interesting. Not much going on there, and I'm going to delete that clip. And you can quickly see your positioning, see if it was right, see if it was wrong. And that's why the live preview really comes in handy when you are checking out where to set the clip. Now, there's a few places that I've been able to clip this on, and I got some really cool shots. So here they were playing around in this little bucket, and we could clip it on, and we got some really fun shots. So I want that one of Gwen, but I also want to open it up and select Edit, and I can go through and see it frame by frame of every part of the clip. So then I could find the exact moment I want and I could save that as a photo. And then I could quickly share it or view that photo. So there we can see the photo. It's right there in my phone's gallery. Now, if you'd like to crop one of the frames that you find to save as a photo, just find that frame and then you can drag in the corners here and that will allow you to crop just a portion of the photo. And then you select save and that will save it to your gallery. Now here's a clip that I took that was a little off. So if we go into the edit and I align it, it will then do its best to straighten it out. So now you can see it is much more straight and not quite so angled. So then I could save that photo or I could go in and save a new motion with that automatically adjusted. Now, once you save a clip from here, it will automatically save that clip into your gallery and it is no longer available on the Google Clips. 
Also, the same thing happens if you delete a clip. So if I delete something, that will then completely remove it. But down here, you do have the undo option. So if you accidentally delete something, you can quickly go and undo that right away. If you wanna quickly go through all your clips, you just grab the tab right here. And when you scroll through, it will pop out. And then I could go all the way to the bottom and then start saving and deleting those. So I'm gonna go through and clear these out. And it's been very interesting to see how the clips save. So some of these are great, they're really close. And other ones maybe were a little too far away. So it just takes a little bit of time and you can learn exactly where you want it. Now, as I said before, this is not intended to be an action camera and you're supposed to use it in different places and find little different areas. I really like it as like a B-roll clip. Um, here I actually attached it to the baby and had her walk around and there you can see that she was spinning around trying to find it. Uh, so that was a fun little angle, but it's really just something that you need to play with. So I did clip the clip on my clothes for a little bit to get some of these cool shots as I was going out and about, which were really fun to have, but it isn't as strong as I would like it to be. So it's really not recommended to be clipped to clothes, but it's better if you are holding it when you are using it. Now the next setting that we have here is the video quality. So I have it set to the highest quality. I want each of these clips to be the best that they can be. Then we have autosave. So autosave essentially takes all of the suggested clips and automatically saves them to your gallery. And then if you're doing the Google Photos, it will automatically back them all up uh, with your settings that you have. So if you really want just everything saved, that's the best way to go. But if you want to just go through and save only the clips you want, keep that in the off position. Then here we have capture rate. So capture rate allows you to capture more or less clips. So I've had it on medium and I'm pretty happy with the clips I got, but if I have the high capture, it will capture the most possible and it will fill up the camera much faster. So if you really wanna make sure that you capture every little moment, I would suggest that. And of course, if you wanna make sure that you don't miss something, select the capture button when it is in the on position and that will capture exactly what you want to see. And then here we have the low, which it will use the least amount of space, but it will not capture very often. So maybe if you position this, have it on for a while and you want it only to capture a few things, select the low category there. Then if we go down here to the anti-banding. So this is useful if you are having flickering in your photos, depending on the lights that you have, you can set this for the 60 Hertz lighting, or you can drop it down to the 50 Hertz and then that will capture less flicker if you're experiencing that. So here we have the familiar faces option. So familiar face allows Google Clips to check out your Google Photos and match those faces with people that you already take photos of. And then it will recommend the people that you're taking a photo of more often if they are already set up in your library. Then down here we have the option to remove the camera, about, help, and send feedback. Now there's a few different ways in which you could use Google Clips. I really like to have it around and if we're about to do some activity, I can just turn it on, set it nearby and it will start recording those little moments. Or I have a preset moment that I like to do and then I can clip it somewhere that's very focused on what we are doing and then it will capture while we're doing that. So there's two ways, really spontaneous or kind of set up, but I really like to have these little different moments um, that I wasn't planning on, just out of the blue, I kind of sit it there somewhere, you never know what the kids are gonna do, and then you can capture those moments forever. I did have some of my clips that I took where I wish I would have propped it up a little bit higher, and that would have been the best position possible. Also, make sure you move the camera around. This is very small, so it's easy to place in different positions, and especially with the clip, you can pretty much place this anywhere to get some really cool shots that maybe you never would have got on your smartphone, and so this is really like an awesome B-roll camera that you have everywhere you go. As a YouTuber, there's all these times that I wanna get these little extra shots to really add to the video that I'm creating. Well, this is the perfect camera to be able to do that because I can place it anywhere, attach it to just about anything and capture those extra little moments. Now that I have saved a few clips and they have been backed up on the Google Photos application, you'll notice that when you go into the Google Photos app, select the search, and then you will have this option that says Google Clips. If you also select Show More, you can go down here and see all your Google Clips in one place. So you can see that they're all available here. You can also see that if you're in the Albums Carousel and you go all the way over to the far right and you'll see Google Clips as well. 
Now, a few other things to know about the way you save the clips. So if you save it as a motion photo, that means that you will not be able to cast the motion to your TV if you're using a Chromecast. Also, if you're creating a movie from Google Photos, it will only take the picture and it will not actually play as a video. If you do choose the motion photo option, you can go into the Google Photos application, select the menu and then save as a video. And this way you still save the video and you don't have to have everything as a motion photo. So now the video has been exported and we can open that up and see it as a full video. So now, so I'm actually gonna prefer to use the video option when saving these because I wanna use those little video clips in my movies that I create through Google Photos as well as if I wanna quickly share them to the Chromecast to play them, that's gonna be more fun. So I'm gonna select the video option when I save these. So the other day when we went to dance, we had a great time. So I'm going to save out all of those clips and I'm going to create a movie just based on these clips so you guys can see what it is like. Now it is going to save these as videos because I've gone into the settings and selected to save as a video. So that was all the clips that we took that day at dance. So now if I go into my Google Photos, that day at dance has all been put into my Google Photos gallery. I have a few pictures in here or a few motion photos mixed with a few videos. And now I'm gonna go through and select all those. And I'm going to create a movie. So here if we select movie, it's gonna save those and put them all together. It has now gone through and created my movie based on the clips that I recorded. Now, I usually would have these mixed with different photos and videos that I've taken, but today we're just gonna use clips so you can see an example of what it would look like. Again, all of those videos were taken from the Google Clip. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I, of course, can go through and edit it, and but that was just the automatic video that it created from selecting those clips. So I'm very excited about what this camera offers, being able to capture those extra moments that I wasn't able to capture by myself. Being able to just sit it there and have it capture those are going to be really neat to have. When the battery life is low and you turn it on, you will see the light glow amber. And that means you just need to go and charge it up. And it doesn't take too long to charge and you get about three hours of battery life out of each charge if it is consistently on the whole time. So there you have it. That is all that you can do with the Google Clips. I'm pretty excited about this little product and I wanna give a shout out to Google for sending this to me early so that I could check it out for you guys. If you have any further questions about how this works, leave a comment below. And if you'd like to see more of the videos that I've made about Google products, check out the playlist over here on the side. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.